The topics discussed and the information provided on this program is for general information. The hosts of this show are not medical professionals and are expressing their personal views and stories related to their individual lives. Their views are not intended to be used or taken as medical information. If you or a family member have suffered a traumatic brain injury, you should seek help from a practicing licensed physician. We hope to help you. We want you to know that there's some life after the hurt. Hi, I'm Matt Duffin, and I suppose we are opening the show. <laughs> That's correct, Matt. I'm glad you're here with us. I'm, yes. back, I'm back in the big chair. <laughs> Well, if you saw the, uh, the, our previous show, uh, we uh, excitement, and the excitement is still here, literally. It's Dr. Kevin Butterfield is our guest today. Our host, of course, is Matt Duffin. And Dr. Butterfield has a program, a, a company called Rainforest. Brain. Thank you. See, and that's what. It, see, when there's something missing, you want to talk to Brain Forest. And what, what he, it is, a unique treatment that's able to help the brains of those that are injured. Remember, we believe, Matt and I and others out there, that there's hope after the hurt and there's a life after whatever happened to you. And Dr. Uh, Dr. Butterfield is here today to explain uh, how, how this came about, his interest in healing, and, uh, and some of his successes, I hope. Uh, you saw the previous show, we had Matt all suited up there with the, uh, the goggles and the uh, really cool Jamaican hat. I liked it. Yeah. yeah. I've been looking for that for years, and he's just now breaking it out of style, so. There you go. Kevin and I go way back. We're friends. I kind of look the other, look around for somebody when they say, doctor, doctor. Are they talking to you, dude? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we've bowled, we've raised, we've fixed my back. We've cut a couple of jokes. Yeah, more than a couple. And he sponsored my bowling. I mean, we just go way back, and now he's helping my brain. Neat. He's helping a lot of people's brains, and he should help more people's brains than they are because the brain forest is growing. More and more trees. Yes. Well, um, the, the last program was very exciting. It actually did a, uh, not a complete scan, but uh, l showing how you're able with the machinery to look into the brain, see areas that uh, may need, uh, I'll use the word adjusting. I don't know if that's the right word or not, and th that there is a technique to adjust the brain so as to better perform back to its old or maybe even a better level than it was previously. Is that correct as I understand it? Correct. I mean, you can reset the timing. I mean, if you can see and you can measure it, you can change it. Um, like, let's use, for example, a concussion. If you get a concussion, they say it goes away. They say that there's things that you can do to um, yeah, just not feel any symptoms of it, but it usually changes you. Uh, ever so slightly, that can be a cascade of problems down the road. And people often ask, you know, what's the difference between what you do and what medical route is for a concussion? And I say, well, it's like you go in your garage and hit your fuse box with a sledgehammer. Uh -huh. The lights flicker on the inside. The medical route is to run through the front door and try to change all the light bulbs, hoping the lights are fixed. And that usually doesn't work. Yeah. So we just go to the fuse box and we reset the wiring and the timing of the brain so that it functions at its optimal best. Um, that's what we do differently, and, and uh, the gold standard for concussions is doing MRI or CAT scan, which is super sensitive if you got a bleed or you, or you cracked your skull. Okay. The brain is an electronic box, right? Yeah. An MRI or CAT scan will show you the slices of what the brain looks like. Our system and our equipment will show you what the electronic slices of the brain look like. So that should be a, a way to, to change that. And the testing they do now for if you get a concussion, they do testing like impact tests where they're all subjective. Okay. And all the, the, top, the top tier uh, athletes or even high school or little league, they sandbag that test, not little league so much, so they can get back on the field. 
okay. risk a secondary concussion, well, that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? Because that would be just a medical opinion. Yeah, I mean, that's well, exactly what they're sandbagging. I mean, if a, a good team has a doctor they can afford. Yeah, I mean, well, we, we've we've happen. seen the top tier race car drivers out there, and they all take that impact test because it's required. And I said, right. well, how does that work? And he goes, well, we just act as dumb as we can when we answer the thing. So when we get a concussion, and go back and do it again. They're actually smarter. Right. <laughs> so right. that's that's not the way to do it. But the 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 brain mapping is is ninety four percent more sensitive than anything else out there to detect. And, that, and that's what we saw in the previous show, you guys. If you haven't seen it, t check it out. But uh, you actually had a a headset, if you will. Yeah. I, I describe it as a, some kind of a, a headdress. But it's sensing what's going on in the brain yes. and reading it. Yes. And then you were saying in the previous show that there's a report that you issue out of that? Yeah, once we do the brain map, it's about, it'll take about a half an hour to do it. you got to do it, you know, 15 minutes with your eyes open and the rest with your eyes closed. Those with the goggles on. Then, yep, uh, and then okay. you do um, submit the reports in and you get like 180 pages of reports. Okay. You, and that's everything you need to know about your brain. And then treatment. Matt, have you experienced this treatment yet or are we going to get you into this? or You haven't tried the new one yet. Not the new one, no. The newest? Okay. When <clears throat> well, I, I want to get into some of that with him because okay. when he was jumping in and crawling in and getting into this work, okay. he'd already been in the field and medical field and all that for a long period of time. His doctor was a neurologist. I mean, but or his dad maybe, was a neurologist. Maybe that's a good intro because how the heck do you get there? Uh, uh, Dr. Porterfield is, as is, is I know, is a chiropractic physician, but also, I mean, how did you get intrigued by the brain to begin with? I mean, what the heck? He grew up with it. Uh, well, my dad was a, uh, a brain surgeon, so and he was a, he was a doctor for the Tiger Detroit Tigers, and um, he I went to every home game with him as a kid. We never got to watch a home game because he always got called in to do brain surgery. <laughs> So I went with him, obviously, and I saw probably a lot of brain surgeries live from the age of six to eight because I was wow. up in the booth. Right? Oh, wow. So that's steered me toward, uh, and racing is my passion, so we have a lot of racing um, patents that Formula One uses in Europe now, and IndyCar this uses some of them. This is for safety stuff for the, the head? No, to keep the cars on the track, to keep them out of the fence. Okay, well, um, keep them from flying. Yeah, keep them flying. Just keep them down on the track. So okay. that's a really big thing. So stands. that took me towards that angle. Okay. And the brain forest is came about when I was in third grade. Okay. Because I was a bully. I know that's hard to believe. But I was a bully to this kid that was different. His name is Andy Silverman. Yeah. And hi Andy. And he hi, was Andy. um he was different but nobody knew why he was different. Yeah. But he to me, I hung the moon for him, you know, but I was always mean to him. Yeah, okay. I remember two inc instances when the teacher asked us uh Asked the class, this is third grade, who wants to clean the erasers? Uh, I raised my hand and said I would. She picked me and she goes, you can pick anyone you want in the class to go with you to, change, to clean the erasers. And Andy was going like this, pick me, pick me, like, you know, because yeah. we're buds, you know. Yeah. So I picked him, got out of the erasers, walked outside the door, and I just batted him all over his head. So he looked like George Washington. <laughs> So we came in and everyone was laughing at him and he was looking at me laughing at me because he thought we both made a joke together but they didn't know it was like I was being mean. Yeah, you're picking on him, right. Huh. Another instance was when Bully. the trampolines were new. Yeah. And it was in the, our school one day and then it was moved like a tour, traveling yeah, trampoline yeah, tour. Trampoline, okay. Yeah, so anyway, I went into the class or the gym and he was so excited. I still remember the shorts he's wearing and the tank top he had on. I mean, this yeah. is how much this impacted me that day. Yeah. So, again, this is third grade, but I took his place and told him to stay in the back of the gym until I was done. So I kept going, 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 and then finally he said, can I go? And I said, okay, you can go now. Yeah. And his face was so full of excitement, he started running for the trampoline and the bell rang. He didn't make it to the trampoline, but he was trying to get away from the teachers that were trying yeah. to tackle him and tell yeah. him no. Yeah. So he never got to bounce on the trampoline. No. So he came back crying um, to me, and it was at that moment I said, well, if I can say no to a kid and make him cry, who's different, I'm never going to do that again. Yeah. So from that point on, uh, even out throughout high school, all my buddies were ones that were different or yeah. slow. They would come over to me if someone was picking on them, then yeah. I'd go pick on them. Yeah, you're, you're I'd do pick the, back. Yeah, yeah. I'd pick back. So <laughs> anyway, so I always wondered what happened to this to kid because in third grade we just went mm -hmm. our different ways and I just felt bad. 
You know, I, I wrote out to, uh, like, Oprah and Dr. Phil because I wanted to find this kid, and I wanted to see how he was. Yeah. But I wanted to thank him uh, for, for making him Turning who I was around. today. Yeah. yeah. And I also apologize. Okay. I'll apologize first. So we found each other on Facebook, like, uh, three years ago, and... Um, yeah. I said, Andy, you know, I got to call him. I got to talk to you because I wanted to tell him myself personally. So this is 40 years later or more, you know. Um, gave his number. I called him, and it, it just, you know, I apologized to him and thanked him. And then he goes, I want you to help me get a girlfriend. I said, I, I can help you there, Andy. And, you know, I be nice to her, open the door, <laughs> get her flowers, compliment her all the time. I was just rattling on. And then he said, what if she won't let me jump on the trampoline? <laughs> he remembered that all these years, all those right? Years. So, and I said, well, then she's not the right person for you. So, anyway, through all this talking and stuff that, you know, the brain force is we're going to make a foundation and we're going to call it Andy's Trampoline Yeah. for him so we can both give back when we're wow. gone, you know, to help with other people that are unfortunate. But we found out later that he had, he was, uh, he had Asperger's. Mm. Mm -hmm. And he got his ass beat every day since I was, we went our separate ways. So he yeah. just had a rough way at it. So that's how the brain force started. I mean, a long time ago for there, I wanted to make it so there's no more Andy Silverman's out there. And as a, as a side note, Andy, he has not muttered your name. Yeah, I not said I, I enunciated it right. <laughs> so then I, uh, my, my business partner and all this, Julie Cloud, she has a heart of gold, and she always wanted to give back and help the, the unfortunate as well like me. Mm -hmm. So we got together. Julie came up with the name Brain Forest. We thought, well, hey, there is... You can't get 10 doctors to say what causes spectrum disorders or all these other mental health conditions, but you probably can get all 10 of them to say, well, their brain waves are messed up from a normal population for whatever reason. Yeah. The food, there's a leaky gut issue. There's a problem with the food. Food's not food anymore. Yeah. Um, so in, in the, they say the gut is the second brain, and they say that because the neurotransmitters that are in your brain mm -hmm. that are used, the hormones, are made in the gut. Mm -hmm. So if you don't fix the okay. gut, you're not sending the proper stuff up to the okay. attic to make it run right. So okay. we do, she's getting her naturopathic doctor degree. She's everything from the neck down. I'm everything from the neck up in the office. And okay. we have, uh, it's like a functional medicine clinic because we've got medical doctors in there and everything else. Julie, I'll go ahead and mention that you're a very attractive lady. She is. She is Center, very attractive. Con Connersville High School class is about 78 or 79. I'm not even going to guess, but you can but go ahead. I, she she I, was I, a homecoming queen. Yeah. I find it uh, fascinating and wonderful that, you know, um, essentially, uh, I will give it away. I, I, I use a four letter word here that we can yeah. use on television that you're being a jerk. Yes. And then upon reflection, yeah. you saw that. And, yep. Uh, what, what was it uh, where uh, Adam Sandler went back to school and he calls the guy that he beat up in third grade uh, and uh, the guy crosses him off the list of people that he has to kill? Oh, I can't uh, remember, I can't the, remember yeah, the name yeah. of the movie. But anyway, so... Billy Madison, probably. We, yeah, Billy Madison. Yeah, we, we, what we've got here, but you, Billy Madison, to, you're taking this out and you actually want to see help. Yeah. And, and yeah. I, I don't, is this the right word? Improve people? I, I want. I don't want to have the the segregation of people that are different or not normal. Stand on the other side of the fence where everyone's over here playing, right. having fun on the playground. I want to bring them all in. Okay. You know what cool. is the problem? What and let's address it and let's change it. And and essentially we are <laughs> our brains and we talked about proper nutrition, Correct. the gut and that sort of thing. But that's not not our focus here today that I know of. But yeah. you know it's important. Maybe that's something we need to address later. But what you're attempting to do is to get people's brains functioning correct better good good better best yeah i mean when the people come into the office um i'll listen but they don't have to tell me a story they don't even have to talk it's in whatever your diagnosis is however long it is whatever yeah. um i'm going to give you the best brain you could possibly have and, uh, and the top cool. functioning brain does not have any learning problems uh and focus the, issues and if they got a short fuse it's longer now okay because they know how to process things better Depression, anxiety, I mean, they don't seem to have much of that. I want to get to it, so... Get to what? Some of the... St <laughs> so, you can tell they know each other. Yeah. Um, uh, now I forgot. See what you did to my brain? I did. Um, so short you know, attention spans... Anyway, 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 back to us. Go ahead. Yeah. Talking. Short attention spans could also be helped, maybe? My yeah. But, and we're not taking your show. We're just making your show <laughs> interesting. No, we're like. taking your show. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you can take oh, a break. Come on. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, what, the thing is, is that we're the the important thing is is that Matt, Kevin, go back in time and through events and and and. Uh, uh, experiences and both of these guys what the reason I'm even on this show is you know I'm a care caregiver have been a caregiver to someone who's brain injured my, my beautiful wife that the thing is is that the challenges that you have and trying to find anybody to help I mean most of it is medicine and what I mean by that is we'll take this pill maybe that'll help and it, it really is exploratory I'm not running the doctors down I'm just saying that you know you have to go through all these steps like you don't know anything about brain injury, traumatic brain injury, with stroke, whatever, and then all of a sudden you're in hell, and you've got this person that you love and you want to help them, and you're like, uh, okay, what do we do? So two of these, twice a day, kind of, I mean, that's, that's all you know, and you're on the net now looking for all these things. What, what I'm hearing Dr. Butterfield say here, and what Matt has been promoting through the Brain Mechanics Show, is that there is help and hope. These technologies have been around since when? 60s. It's been around for a long time. And but I mean, now technology can pinpoint the problem a lot better. Who's now. using it? Who's using? Well, yeah, I mean, 85% eight, 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 of the people out there that use them use them as part of their arsenal. They pull them out out of the closet, blow the dust off, and use them every now and then. Okay. But this is the primary thing we're doing. How, who are you helping now as a, as a literal example, though, besides patients who have maybe traumatic brain injury? Oh, we're, help, we're helping, you know, uh, we had some ex-game skateboarders, medalists come out, you know, from San Diego because they want to, they either had, uh, they want to increase their game. I mean, it's for peak performance and as self, well. You know, self-mental abuse. A lot, I mean, there's a lot of different people that come in from, like, we see a lot of kids. I mean, Drugs or anxiety or just different self-beatings that <clears throat> us as human beings do to our yeah, heads. It, yeah, and the people that come in, they say, can, can you help me? And then my answer that I tell everyone is I have no idea, because I don't. Mm -hmm. It's not a magic bullet. It's going to help 85% of the people and 15% is not. Which side are you on? You know, we don't know, but we Which haven't had any of that side yet. So. How a neurologist answers every question. But yeah, that's we another thing. That the, the, if you <laughs> were having more now, um, a medical doctor is referring to us. Referring to you? But I mean, if somebody has a problem that they want to try to get off the medication, they want to try something different, and they go to their family doctor, the family doctor probably never heard of this because they didn't take it in school, they don't know about it. Yeah, that, and that, that was one of the big challenges I had is that, you know, I'm asking these pointed questions, and I can remember one fascinating moment I had with, with one doctor, and, now, and this was just one. Most of the people that we were involved with are healers, and they want to help. Yeah. They want to do everything they can. But you wouldn't believe that the pressure that they're under every day. I mean, there's this emergency here, and there's that there, and, you know, I don't even know how they can think. Yeah. But, you know, you have the established protocol, which is allowed, Sometimes they're able to step over the bounds and pick number five instead of the four that are usually used, and to great relief, or they'll give you an aside, you know, maybe you want to, but, you know, we, we had wonderful support from medical doctors, but at the same time, their scope is limited, and when you go in and say, hey, I was on the net, and I saw that, they don't have time to be on the net and saw that, okay? You're, you're looking at some pretty fascinating new stuff out there, right. and you're telling them, and as one doctor said to me who was less than cooperative, said, where did you go to medical school, to which I replied in my ignorant voice, on the internet. Yeah. And, and he's like, just shook his head and he walked away from me. This is neat. It's, yeah, there, I mean, but it's, well, it's there, but it's not. No, there's a problem that if 86% of all prescription drugs are consumed in the United States, that's, yeah, that's yeah, a that's, problem. Yeah, we got a problem. There's a pill, potion, lotion for anything. You know, what it, I, mean? It, I mean, literally, let's not I, fix it. Let's just cover it up. I'm you know, working like I said, on Eli Lilly to be one of our sponsors. Oh, you, yeah, that's a good idea. You can make, I'm you kidding. can, you can zombie anything if you pill it enough. I'm kidding. You know what I mean? Uh, no, I know you're kidding. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, not Eli, Eli Lilly. I will take all the money you got. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but again, there's a time and place for everything. Yeah, and that's and that, and that's our point. But I, I, I just find this so fascinating because it's. There's medication for medics, medicine, medical needs. Yeah. You, 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 you know, I, some people will take a aspirin for a, for a headache, and it works. Yeah. And they won't take another one for the next seven, eight months. They get another headache, they pop it in, it works again. Yeah. You know that kind of I believe in. Yeah, yeah but we back up, and we, again, once we ha better assess the brain, which is you, like you said. Mm -hmm. We see what can be going on there. I mean, sure. if we do some methyl genetic testing, which we do with the gut stuff, which Julie does. And she doesn't like when I use this example, but I'll use it because she's not here. Um, mm. 
I wish. If, if you take something that you think is healthy for you, but the, you know the Krebs cycle, things are spinning off all the time yeah. inside the cellular level. Okay. If you're taking something you think is healthy for you, like vitamin C, mm -hmm. but you don't have these things working right, it's actually peeling off ammonia, and that's poisoning you. Yeah. So we know what you can take, what you can't take, what you shouldn't take. Mm -hmm. When we address the gut stuff. Yeah. Well, the the, the old expression was, you're, "Come on, your mom too. You are what you eat, <laughs> right? You yeah. are what you eat." Yeah. yeah. And you can sit there until you eat it, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're I'm not, one big bony sandwich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But. Uh, I, this uh, so we obviously we looked at the machinery in the previous episode, uh -huh. but what we're talking about here is that your the brain forest has more than one the forest has more than one tree. Yeah, I mean, you, Julie, I hope so. And, uh, see, you got to get our next guest, man. Well, it's growing and getting developed as well, and he yeah, says already expanding to thirty five across the country. No, well, we're getting to a place where. Because we want to do a lot of peak performance stuff with, the, like the IndyCar drivers, let's say. So if we, if we have five offices at every IndyCar location, right? right? So right. we have affiliate doctors to help the Indy Silver Men's of that town, right? Okay. So we can expand our footprint a lot better that way, mm -hmm. um, and help a lot more people. So that's okay. our goal for this year. We want to do a hard launch at the Indy 500, okay, and just expand from that point on. Is there a website or something where people could go uh, take a little look at this? Uh, uh, BrainForestCenters.com is the website. S E N S O R? Huh? Sensors? Brainforest Centers. Okay, Centers. Yes. Okay. yes. All right. You can try Sensors, see what's there, but it's not. Uh, they do Center, but they do it in that English, old English way. Okay. No, we don't, not anymore. It's oh, no, C E N T E R S. Okay. Because we're in America. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Um, yeah. well, I think this is neater than that. That European racing what, thing you know. took over for a minute, but. Yeah. And we also have some stuff that we can, um, proprietary stuff that we're doing to help these kids, family members, uh, monitor their kids' brain 24-7 with an app. Oh, well. Wow. So that's under wraps, but that's what we're going to plan on doing as well. I'm going to get him into the, being involved with the Miracle League and doing some sponsorship with the Love Miracle League. Love to do League. that. Yeah. Love to do that. Now, you might want to explain what the Miracle League is. I do. I, I was there. I mean, that's the Miracle baseball Miracle League thing. Baseball League? Yeah. Well, everybody knows what my Miracle League Baseball League is. Yeah. What? Where you been? <laughs> but uh, you know, and we're getting ready to start. It is summer. Yeah. So this Spring. this is this is baseball for people who normally wouldn't be picked to play baseball, right? Yeah. These are for, Andy. <laughs> you're on my team. Yeah. Come on, Andy. We'll whip their butt. Yeah. There you go. See. <laughs> so, you know. So my my fellow bench setters in high school, I would have been. Actually, okay. But anyway. First string. Yeah. <laughs> Possibly. You know, 59, I'm making the all-star team again this year. You watch me. Right. Anyway. Oh, Lord. <laughs> we got him off on the sports. Sorry about uh -huh. that. Sorry, folks. That's okay. It's baseball season. <laughs> and we love baseball. And we're quitting smoking. And, but we always got to have something in our hand. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, well, that's interesting. And that's going. It's slowly, but it's going well. Doctor, well, this this uh, resetting, obviously, I mean, I, I know him well enough to go back that he was not born with a cigarette in his hand. Uh -huh. And uh, for the first few years, up to maybe third, fourth, fifth grade, yeah. he didn't have a cigarette in his hand. But ever since then, yeah. uh, that I've known Matt. Yeah. I had, had older brothers. And so them you it, does it help with any kind of addictions like that? Is that something? Oh, that's I mean, we, we've seen, you know, <laughs> alcoholics, we've seen the heroin addicts, we've seen the huffers, we've really? seen opioid addicts. Yeah, we've seen it all. <clears throat> but it's very aggressive you, twice a day. Normally, the training is like once or twice a week. Okay. And then you do that for 20 sessions, then you do another brain map and compare. Right? Okay. That's what we do. And it's also... I suppose in regard kind of like AAA, you could, that's doing something else besides wanting to do drugs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you could go get your brain map fixed in the morning, but you still want to go out and do some heroin in the afternoon. I assume I'm not a heroin addict. Yeah, but, but I, mean, you know, I mean, it does, again, the addiction gate is working open, and right around the addiction gate is a PTSD, depression, anxiety, and stuff. And if you can reset the timing in that area deep in the brain. Well, Made laugh. And there's some things in my life I have not done. Yeah, you know, I'm, and I'm proud of you for not doing that. I, I really am. <laughs> Well, I, I, I find this all very fascinating, and especially, and in, in I want to speak from the point of view of a caregiver, okay? My, my wife's had this wonderful, wonderful recovery, and uh, it's just a delight to be around. But that's not always the case for you, you know? I mean, as you, Matt, well know, and, and uh, Doctor, that 
it's not one of those things that it doesn't tend to come easy. But to have another place you could go, another option, yeah, uh, uh, thank option. You, option. Yeah. Yeah. you have an option. Well, it's, it's truly exciting. As truly. you've heard, and we've been through, and before I hit my, I hit my kid across the street from my rehab doctor in Indianapolis because I've been seeing her again for the last couple of months. You know, it never ends. Once you get a brain injury, you got to keep working on it. Yeah. But then I'm double whammed right there. I mean, just. But it, you you bought another. Uh, you got to fight out of it. You bought another windshield from Safe Flight, didn't you? <laughs> I believe Mercedes Insurance Company did. I'm not uh, sure. Who or the other guy that stopped in front of us. You can actually stop in front of somebody, and it can be your fault now, in an accident. Doctor, I found you're that out. You're in the safety business. Would you recommend that he actually wear the seatbelt that's provided in the car, or just uh, like, just, sit on, like just ah, maybe put the windshield on a hinge or something? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably better. Yeah, the seatbelt was going on, <laughs> but pop open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just got God. two fish sandwiches from McDonald's. We was getting on the entrance uh, way. Uh, they story. were more important than the seatbelt, evidently. Good story. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't were get more seat important than the, the yeah. seatbelt. Next time you're in there when you're in tuxedo, you don't want any of that fish grease on there. That's right. Oh God. All right. Once a year, I eat oh, fish from McDonald's. And well, I tell you what, we, we we've fast. had an incredible time here, and you can tell, uh, as you can tell. Uh, Dr. Butterfield has uh, an engaging personality and a lot of stories to tell, but I hope that you'll get a, in touch with him directly. Uh, keep keep uh, hanging in there with us on the Brain Mechanics, and uh, there's hope. There really is. Got a, yes, so, there is. So appreciative. Sir. Yeah, you know, appreciate you people it. can contact me through the East Central Indiana Support Group. Uh, any more information you want. We'll get some website things up for you there so you can see that as well, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, we really, really, really appreciate it. We appreciate uh, everything going on here at WCTV as well. It's uh, incredible. Would this be the time to give me a kiss? Uh, no, 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 no. We got to cut away all that. <laughs> yeah. That that was all for Andy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Topics discussed and the information provided on this program is for general information. The hosts of this show are not medical professionals and are expressing their personal views and stories related to their individual lives. Their views are not intended to be used or taken as medical information. If you or a family member have suffered a traumatic brain injury, you should seek help from a practicing licensed physician.